Welcome to this short take on AP US history. Today, we're gonna to deal with the politics of progressivism. So progressivism got started at the local level and it got started at the local level, primarily because of a lot of reforms that were done to get people more involved with local politics. So for example, at the local level in a lot of cities, they passed things like the referendum, the recall and the initiative. The ideas behind this were to allow people outside of the normal elections to either with the initiative, pass laws on their own, with recall, get rid of corrupt officials, and with the referendum, take out laws that had been passed by legislatures. And the idea behind this was to try to make things more democratic, but also the idea behind this was to make things more efficient. In a lot of local cities, they pass things like either the city manager who could just pass laws a little bit more efficiently or kind of contradictorily set up panels in which people would be able to work together in order to collaborate and get things done. The idea was to make things more efficient and more pure in the democracy. Eventually, this raised to the national level. Uh, we had a bunch of reporters who went out who found a lot of problematic things within society. And Teddy Roosevelt called them the muckrakers. Why did he call them that? Well, actually, Teddy Roosevelt didn't like these guys. He thought all they did was break up the muck within society and demonstrate all the corruption that was going on. But eventually, Teddy Roosevelt was won over. How did this happen? Well, it's an interesting story. He was reading a book by a socialist named Upton Sinclair. Now, Upton Sinclair's book, The Jungle, was really meant to point out all the problems in capitalism. But Teddy Roosevelt was interested in one story, the story of meatpacking, in which he read one morning of horrible stories, basically old dusty meat, moldy meat, meat with rats, in it, uh, basically put into the sausage that people were eating. Well, he had had enough. And so Teddy Roosevelt formed what were called the three C's, the control of corporations, the protection of consumers, and conservation. Uh, so let's start off here, control of corporations. He saw the main problem as monopolies. Famous case, the Northern Securities Trust, in which in the Southwest of America, there was a pool done for railroads, and Teddy Roosevelt wanted to break that down. Or take, for example, uh, the protection of consumers. This is where he passed acts like the Meatpacking Act, which you probably know is meant to curb the problems that Upton Sinclair brought up about. Or the Pure Food and Drug Act, which was meant to get information out to consumers so that they would be able to buy good food. But then most importantly was conservation. Now, the idea of conservation was to conserve natural resources for future use. And Teddy Roosevelt really believed in this for the efficiency of the marketplace. But there was a guy named John Muir who also believed in the preservation or protection of nature for the long term. And Teddy Roosevelt agreed with him when it came to national parks. Eventually, Teddy Roosevelt decided not to run after 1908. So Teddy Roosevelt handpicked his successor, William Howard Taft. And Taft actually did even more progressively than Teddy Roosevelt did. But he made two big mistakes that brought Teddy Roosevelt back into the fold. The first one was called the Payne-Aldrich Bill, in which uh, William Howard Taft tried to lower tariffs, but in doing so, he had to compromise. So he lowered tariffs in some areas, but raised them in others. And the overall tariff rate went up. But probably his biggest mistake came with the Hetch Hetchy Valley. Here, he fired the Secretary of the Interior, Gifford Pinchot, a friend of Teddy Roosevelt, because he wanted to make sure that the Hetch Hetchy Valley could be used in the future for use. That was it. Teddy Roosevelt was done. He came back into politics and ran against William Howard Taft in 1912. He lost the nomination for the presidency, but he formed his own party called the Bull Moose Progressive Party. And that split the Republican vote and let Woodrow Wilson, the Democrat, became president. Now, Woodrow Wilson was also a progressive, and he had a vision called the New Freedom. In this vision, he wanted to break everything down in society. In fact, he wanted to kind of return to a Jeffersonian view of society. The Jeffersonian view was the idea of small businesses. How did he do this? Well, I'm going to give you three big laws that demonstrate this. First, the income tax. Woodrow Wilson believed in taxing people at a higher rate at the higher levels of income. Why? Not just because to raise money for the government, but to break down their wealth and concentration of wealth. He also believed in what was called the Federal Reserve Act. The Federal Reserve Act was the establishment of the Federal Reserve to regulate banks. This was an attempt to break down the monopolistic control of J.P. Morgan. And then there was a third act that Wilson was famous for, the Clayton Antitrust Act. This was in addition to the old Sherman Antitrust Act, and the purpose behind it was to try to give teeth to breaking down monopolies. Okay, in the end, why is this all important? Here are your big takeaways. For progressives, progressives today are often viewed in two ways. One way is the heroes of the common man. 
The other way that they're oftentimes viewed is sort of the demons who brought in socialism to America. It's kind of in the middle. Actually, what progressives were about was the attempt to try to make capitalism and industrialism more competitive, more efficient, the attempt to break down concentrated power. There was a dark side, though, to progressives. Progressives believed in science, and using science, they bought into the notion of scientific racism, social Darwinism, and they applied what was called the science of eugenics, and oftentimes went after minorities. Good example of that is Woodrow Wilson. Uh, Woodrow Wilson was known to be an explicit racist. In fact, he allowed for the filming of uh, The Birth of a Nation, a film that basically tried to make the KKK out to be the heroes of the Reconstruction period. So the progressives are important because they established the foundations to what we're gonna be studying about for the rest of what we study about in US history, the beginnings of an activist government against what had been the idea of a laissez-faire government. Okay, see you in class.